This video will go through reactions in the SLB software. With the analysis complete, we can see that there are two types of reactions that can be viewed, static reactions and airy reactions. So for this particular very simple slab, we have a longer span and a shorter span, and we can display the various results for the given low case or combination. So no live load applied and for the load combination. Now, what static analysis means, this refers to the fact that the stiffness of the, of the structure that is modeled is being taken into consideration when determining the distribution of forces. So we can see here a total force of 1044 kilonewtons distributed in this manner um, in across the vertical elements, across the walls. And we see based on this larger span, the shorter span, we have a negative uplift force to uh, maintain equilibrium in this slab. Pressing area, what area method refers to is uh, reactions are calculated based off the wall's tributary areas. So again, a total load of 1044 kilonewtons. However, it's distributed in the following manner. So everything positive downwards. Now it's up to the user to determine which of these type of reactions will be more representative of the physical reality they're trying to model. So for example, if this wall on the right was to be unreinforced brickwork, that would not be able to restrain the slab in such a manner then the static reactions may not be suitable. Or if we were to use the static reactions, we would have to delete this wall. Uh, note that the, uh, the SLB or any of the inductor software doesn't have an option to make uh, columns, walls, so vertical elements tension free. Now, if we go to the model and solver settings, we have a few additional settings in relation to the area method. So what wall subdivision refers to is that for every wall element, just for calculation of tributary area method reactions, we subdivide the wall into segments. This basically switching this on means that the, uh, the area method reactions calculated for the walls will be more accurate, but will take a little bit longer to do. So this should always be on as the results will be more accurate. What the distance weight refers to is um, when there's a transfer load, how much of that load goes to cl the closest supports and how much of that load goes to the supports further away. So it's, it's shown with pictures in the manual, but it basically that, that's what it determines. In this example, it won't make a difference. There's no load transferring from above. But if there was, we would determine the distribution um, of that force to closer elements or to elements further away by adjusting this distance weight factor. Now we may have noticed the screen change there. Uh, this is because this particular image was stitched in after the initial screen recording. Uh, this was for the addition of the improved load distribution uh, tool for airy reactions. What this does is basically for some cases, for symmetrical cases, uh, sometimes the reactions for area method produce funny or strange results, so they don't match the hand calculations, so meaning there's not a symmetrical distribution of the tributary area and hence the reactions. This is caused by uh, the finite elements not being symmetrical, so because of the predefined rules of the triangular shape, there's they're slightly skewed, sort of, so there's more area coming down onto one column or wall and less onto the other. Uh, hence the reactions don't make sense. Switching, switching this button on performs additional checks which will distribute these reactions in a more realistic manner. So this, what will match the hand calculations closer. So for more examples on this, please refer to the user manual. And a final setting in model and solver settings as it relates to the reactions is we have the option to include self-weight of the columns and walls below in the reactions. So currently this is on, so the, the self-weight of these walls is included in this number. So this would be useful if we were designing a footing, say, so we'd be having looking at a service load. Um, however, if we were just interested to see what loading was coming down onto the top of the slab, we would switch this off and then hit run and hit exit and then look at the reactions again we see that the values are a bit smaller than they were previously 
So you know, total force now has dropped down to 720. Let's open a, um, a real example and talk about a few things that we need to consider. So this is the slab from a house uh, and it was used, SLB was used to design the reinforcement, check the slab for deflection as well. This particular job had a few stories, was multi-storied, and it was designed just in the SLB software. So typically for multi-story buildings, RCB should be used. The SLB software can handle buildings up to two, three stories max. How we design multi-story buildings in SLB when SLB only considers one floor at a time is that basically we start from the top floor, run our analysis, we then export our reactions so we choose either static or area we then model the floor below and then we choose to import the reactions from the floor above so again we're not by doing this method we're not fully considering the stiffness of the frame obviously we can't apply any lateral loading because the SLB software restrains the slab uh, but for smaller buildings where that won't be an issue so up to three stories that is how we would do it we would import export the reactions per floor with this button now other things to consider with these <coughs> with these smaller residential slabs we talked about it before uh, we must determine is the uh, is the mathematical model in the inductor software in SLB a true representation of the physical reality so the various structural elements, the columns, the walls, the beams, the slabs themselves, all have some inbuilt properties in the software. And the question is, are they an accurate representation of what will be happening in reality? So for example, this particular wall nib, uh, because it is a wall element in the software, it's assumed that it will be fully restraining the, um, it will be fully restraining the slab at this, at this location. So if we go ahead and look at the deflections, we can see we've got pretty good deflections if we're looking at KCS long-term total deflections because of that wall nib. So we see 9.2 mil and maybe 5.5 mil here at the band beam, but we'll also see some pretty high bending moments there. So about negative so that peak obviously would average that out so negative 650 positive 209 now if this was for example reinforced block work unreinforced brick it may n it will not be able to provide that level of restraint if we look at the static reactions we see that we get for the ultimate case a very high reaction in that in that particular wall and whether or not it has the capacity to take that is another question so if we open up the the next file where we delete it, we'll, we'll see how it compares. So looking at the deflections for the 50% KCS long-term total, we can see the deflections will now be worse. So it's gone up by about a factor of two at the mid-span of this band beam. And again, the differential displacement is still about in the order of four or five mil but total deflection is much worse and we should see the bending moment here and hence the reinforcement has um, basically has gone down at this location as well so we wouldn't have to design obviously the wall may be there in reality but it probably it will not have the effect that it did in the previous model this may be a more accurate representation of the bending moment and hence the reinforcement we need to detail so Yes, the, the, the point of this small example was to show that we always have to consider is the mathematical model in the inductor software in SLB and true accurate representation of the physical reality of the, of the physical reality we're trying to model. So will it behave in reality as the way it has been modeled in the software? So in summary, we had a look at the static reactions and the area reactions. We saw that the two different methods can produce sometimes very different results. And it's us, up to us to determine which of the two methods is more suitable. 
uh, it might not always be the best idea to design to the worst case of both. We might be overly conservative. One may be more representative of what we're trying to model than the other for a given case. Uh, we also looked at some of the settings as they relate to reactions and then something to consider regarding um, short walls in basically in these typical domestic uh, models and very common in houses. And we also saw how to import export reactions from an SLB file into another SLB file. This concludes this video. Thank you for watching.